Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on in here. Praise the Lord, everybody. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Psalms 24 and 7 says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Lift the King of glory, may, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Lift him up, you ancient doors. That, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. We wanna welcome you this morning to our Women's Day service. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for all the women who have been standing in the gap for their families, standing in the gap for their jobs, their loved ones, standing in the gap, lifting up praises to our King, we want to thank God for the women who didn't give up, who kept fighting, who kept staying on their knees and praying. It's more than just our attendance and service. It's what we do at home when the doors are closed. There's been many a women, many a nights on their knees crying and praying, lifting up our pastors and lifting up everyone. And so we just want to thank God for every woman that has been lifting up the name of Jesus. We want to welcome you, Facebook and YouTube, to our morning worship service here at New Revelation Missionary Baptist Church at 3140 West 21st Avenue in Gary, Indiana, where our pastor is, Pastor Edward C. Turner. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for him. Those of you who have a program, if you would follow along with me, this is our call to worship and say this with me. O oh Lord, open thou my lips and my mouth and let the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And we will now have the scripture reading by our very own Sister Horton Springfield. Good morning. Please follow along with me as I bring you King James Version, Titus chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. That, the, that age women likewise that they be in behavior as becoming holiness, not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keeping at home good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemy. The word of God for the people of God. Let us bow our heads in prayer. O Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all of the earth. Lord, this morning we come with grateful hearts, Lord. We just want to thank you for another opportunity, Lord, to live another day, Lord. We realize it's nothing that we did, Lord, that afforded us this opportunity, Lord. No matter how good we were, Lord, or how bad we were, Lord, it was your mercy that let us see another day, Lord. Because of your mercy, we are not consumed. And for that reason, Lord, alone, we thank you. You are a good God, a mighty God, one who has proven yourself time after time after time. In spite of us, Lord, you forgive us, Lord, for our sins, Lord. And since we're mentioning that, Lord, how about we just come to you right now, Lord, and just ask for forgiveness, Lord. Because you say that all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. But you also say, Lord, that if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so for that, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings, Lord. We stand here today, Lord, and some of us, Lord, may not be feeling it, Lord. We may be sick, Lord, but we press our way on into your house of worship, Lord. Some of us, Lord, come with troubled hearts, Lord. There's something that's going on in the home, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would touch every marriage, Lord, that is assembled for under your union, Lord. We pray that you will bless them, Lord. Teach them how to be the husband, the godly husband that you call man to be. And teach them how to be the godly woman that you have called them to be, Lord. 
bless those unions, Lord, so they may stand and represent you, Lord, that the world might see, Lord, that marriage is a gift from you, Lord. It's a blessing from you, Lord, and we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the children that we have, Lord. Albeit, though, they don't always obey us, Lord. We just pray for them, Lord. We pray that you will touch them, Lord. We pray that you will lead them, Lord, every day of their lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for giving those gifts to us, Lord. And we realize, Lord, that you love them more than we do, Lord. So we just ask, Lord, that you would just protect them, Lord, just shelter them, Lord. Just keep them and lead them, Lord, as we ask that you would do for us, Lord. Because even though we're adults, Lord, we still go the wrong way, Lord. And we just ask that you will order our steps, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be obedient to your word, Lord. We know, Lord, that we're not just passing through this land just to be passing through, but you have put us here, Lord, on assignment, Lord. We are to go forth, Lord, and to tell the world of a dying Savior who has risen that they might live again, Lord. So we ask, Lord, that you would just anoint us, Lord. Let us not forget that the church is not something that we just visit on Sunday, Lord, but it's something that we carry within us, Lord. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then on Sunday we come back to be refueled, Lord. Have your way in us, Father. Let your will be done, Lord. Fall fresh on us right now, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Lord. Be in the midst of this service, Lord, we pray. We pray, Lord, that you would touch each and every one of us, Lord. You know the need, Lord, and you are more than able to meet it, Lord. So we ask that you would just have your way, Lord. Let us not leave here the same, Lord. Let us be changed by the preached word or a song or something, Lord, because we sacrifice for coming out here today, Lord, just to be in your presence, Lord. So have your way in us and through us, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would just be Blessed by the service, Lord, help us to worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of us know that every praise belongs to our God? So come on and praise with us on this morning. Put your hands together, come on. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Say every word of worship. with one accord, every praise, every praise is to our God, sing hallelujah, hallelujah, to our God, glory hallelujah, it's to our God, every praise, every praise is to our God. Every 
Amen. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Amen. Let's just give God a hand of praise one more time, please. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning to all and welcome to our annual Women's Day morning service on behalf of New Revelation Missionary Baptist Church and Pastor Edward C. Turner. Let's give our pastor a hand. Amen. We would like to thank all of our visitors for coming out and blessing us with your presence. You are truly welcome in this place, not to spectate, but to participate in worshiping and praising with hand clapping, feet tapping, and making a joyful noise unto the Lord. We pray, thank you. We pray that something will be said or done to inspire you to come back. Um, inspire you to come back or stir up your spirit to become a member of our awesome church. Um, and we just pray that you guys enjoy today and have an awesome time. And thank you and God bless. If you all could join us in singing the congregational song, Leaning on the Everlasting Arm. Please stand.
be anxious for nothing, but in prayer and supplication, supplication let your requests be known unto God. We know already that he answers prayer. Whatever it is, you can tell him. Sometimes we get a little confused how to pray, what to pray for, or what you need. But I tell you, you can't use it like a Christmas shopping list, a grocery store list. The scripture says he already need. Know what you need before you pray. So therefore, come pray and believe and trust in his holy word. And then in the scripture, he was preaching and teaching. And then he told his people, don't pray like the heathens pray. Then on another occasion in Luke, he was talking to his disciples. And one of them asked, Lord, teach us how to pray. Are you one of his disciples? So let us pray in like manner. He said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, we know that you're in heaven, and we are your children. And we come before your presence, giving you the worship and the praise and the glory. Because you are worthy to be praised. We reverence you. We give you because you are holy and you are a holy God. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Lord Jesus, your kingdom has come through Jesus Christ. It came. His kingdom. His kingdom is not of this world. But Lord Jesus, we are the church. And the church is part of your people. Thank you, Father. We just thank you. God will be done. Oh, yes, I know the will will be done. Father in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Thank you, Father, for what you already have done. Daily bread, you take care of us. You supply our needs daily. And we thank you. Our bread may not come from heaven, but you have places on earth where we can get you. And then you say, we can't live by bread alone, but by every word that you see. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, can we clap our hands in this place? Come on, can we make some noise in this place? If you can stand on your feet and praise with us, come on, stand on your feet. Come on, do I have some believers in this place? Do I have some believers in this place? Do I have some believers in this place? Oh, come on. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, son. Say everybody. Come on and praise. Come on and praise. 
praise him. Come on and praise him. Praise the Lord forever. I will bless the Lord. Oh, I got a right to praise Him. You got a right to praise Him. Just say, I will. Yes, I bless the Lord. I will. Yes, I bless the Lord. I will. Yes, I bless the Lord. I will. Yes,
Look so nice and they're yellow. Look so beautiful. Give yourself a kiss. Our guest preacher for this blessed occasion is the oldest of four daughters of Pastor Walter P. and Lady Lynn Turner. She is a humble servant, dependable daughter and sister, musician, friend, mentor, and worshiper. She is the minister of music for her home church, New Spiritual Light Missionary Baptist Church, where her father is the senior pastor. She serves with humility, grace, wisdom, and an unwavering commitment. Born December 19, 1985 in Oak Lawn Park, Illinois, she attended Homewood Flossmoor High School and DePaul University and resides in Flossmoor, Illinois with her family. She has spent 18 years working in the areas of community engagement and program development. She is the program director for the New Spiritual Light Youth Development Program, which operates an after-school tutoring program and summer day camp program. She previously worked for Chicago Public Schools as a community coordinator in the Office of Faith-Based Initiatives. As of December 2018, she has been employed with CETA as a family support specialist in the Family Support and Community Engagement Department. She recently completed a six-week training to become a certified family and community development specialist, which provided her with skills to support and connect with families and individuals to achieve stability. Amen. Her passions in life are helping to serve others, yes. develop young people, music, her family, and motivating those in the body of Christ. Amen. She lives by her favorite scripture, which is 1 Corinthians 2, 9, which states, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared them that love him. After the choir has rendered another selection, new revelation, Please receive Evangelist Lauren Ashley Turner. Yeah.
to be praised amen thank you you may be seated in the presence of the lord hallelujah it's an honor and a privilege to be here amen this is my first time at new revelation hallelujah but i tell you i felt home since me and my mom walked through the door amen so thank you to the great pastor of this church come on give it up for your pastor your leader amen pastor edward c Turner, amen. We are not related, amen. Amen. It's just 
come at last name. Amen. Amen. But we give honor to all of you. I give honor to my pastor, Pastor Walter P. Turner III, who has given me permission and allowed me to be here to fellowship with you guys this morning. And my lovely mother, Lady Lynn Turner. Come on, give it up. Hallelujah. For my mom. Listen, uh, <clears throat> me and my mom, we hang out real tight. And she took me to see my Uncle Charlie this weekend. Y'all know my Uncle Charlie, last name Wilson. Amen. And my Auntie Janet, Janet Jackson. So if y'all got a problem with me, y'all take it up with her. Amen. Amen. No, but my mom teaches us balance. And so I'm so grateful and honored that she is with us today. And to all of you, come on, give it up for the Women's Ministry of New Revelation. Y'all look good. Y'all sound good. Amen. Look so pretty in your yellow. Amen. And I'm just, I'm a church girl, so we're going to have church this morning. Amen. Can you give me F sharp? I need the oh, I, I need the y'all know this. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I believe when we come to church, we come to have church. Amen. The Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, turn your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 17. And we'll begin reading at verse 12. I'm reading for the New International Version. I love your theme, godly women setting an example. And I want to look at it from just a different perspective. Amen. Amen. When you say have it, say I've got it. <clears throat> Amen. Verse 12 says, as surely as the Lord your God lives. She replied, I don't have any bread. Only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small cake of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. I want to say verse 15 one more time. She went away and did as Elijah told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. I want to talk from the th thought this morning, the butterfly effect. Hallelujah, the butterfly effect. Father, we give your name glory. We give your name honor. And we praise you, God. We thank you, oh God, right now for this day. For this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. First, God, we want to ask for forgiveness for our sins, oh God. If there's anything that's within us, within me, that's not like you, I ask that you remove it right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for this preaching moment, oh God. I ask that you will sit me down and you raise up within me and let somebody be changed and set free and healed from the word that's gone forth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The butterfly effect, amen. The butterfly def effect is defined as the concept that small things can have nonlinear impacts on a complex system. So basically this means that small actions can have a drastic effect on something that is completely unrelated to the starting conditions. And so the example that is most commonly used is a butterfly flapping its wings can cause a typhoon. And I know it may sound a little complicated, hallelujah, but the butterfly effect is shown in an episode of one of my favorite sitcoms, Family Matters. Y'all know Family Matters. Steve, did I do that? Amen. In the episode, Steve, he's created a time machine. Hallelujah. And he and Carl go back to the 1970s to when Carl and Harriet purchased their home. Hallelujah. And he, Steve told Carl, don't touch nothing when you go back. Just observe. And when Carl, he didn't listen. And when they got back to the 1970s, Carl, he left himself a little note that included recommendations on stocks to buy and other investment opportunities. And when they returned to the present time, they now find out that Carl is a billionaire. But not only is he rich, He's also trapped in a loveless marriage. Harriet wants to leave him. They didn't have no children. And it's all because Carl left himself a note. And when I researched this idea more, I found 
that the butterfly effect in theory can be explained for many of the historical events, such as it's believed that Adolf Hitler's rejection from art school by a Jewish professor ignited such hatred in him towards Jews and led to the Holocaust. Y'all stay with me, I'm going somewhere. In our current climate, unjustified killings of unarmed black men and black women have ignited worldwide protests and social justice reform and overall racial inequality awareness. The butterfly effect is even in the Bible. We see it when Noah's obedience to God to build an ark, it saved him and his family as God destroyed mankind for their wickedness with the great flood. Joseph being sold by his brothers in G Egypt to die actually placed him in Pharaoh's house to interpret his dreams and prepare for the coming famine, which in turn saved his family and reunited him with his father. Esther's willingness to defend her people allowed her to save the Jews from a plan of death. Hallelujah. And all of these biblical examples I noticed that they have a common theme all of them said a simple yes to God acted in faith not knowing the outcome but their faith yielded mind-blowing results hallelujah it's called a spiritual butterfly effect hallelujah and when we look at our theme scripture today Titus chapter 2 we find that Paul he wrote this letter to Titus to encourage him as Titus worked at the churches that they organized in Crete and in chapter 2 Paul gave Titus some instruction for various age groups in the church including old and young women hallelujah and as I prepare for today the Holy Spirit said to me that godly women setting an example first starts with us being godly Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the scripture says, be ye holy, for I am holy. Come on, talk back to me. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, come out from among them and be ye separated. Hallelujah. And I found that we can try to set as many examples as we want, but if our witness is tainted, Hallelujah. If our lives don't line up, if it don't match up with what we're teaching, it's all in vain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Godliness, one of the definitions of godliness is defined as the practice of conforming to God's wishes, being morally upright and reflecting the nature of the kingdom of God in the course of everyday life. That's a lot. God, you want me to be nice to somebody that's being mean to me. Hallelujah. God, you know I got a little fighting spirit. You don't want me to hit somebody that didn't hit me back. Hallelujah. God, I don't understand what you're doing and you want me to trust you even when I can't understand what's going on. Hallelujah. And we've seen it in the church. I know I'm not the only one who has looked up to somebody and has been let down when the real them done came out. Hallelujah. You've seen them shout. You And my daddy has a saying, you know somebody if it ain't you. Hallelujah. You've seen them shout. You've seen them speak in tongues. You've seen them pray fire now. And five minutes later after church is over, they cussing somebody out in the parking lot. Hallelujah. They're mean to everybody. Can't speak. Hallelujah. They're the first ones to go off. Hallelujah. We talking about godly women setting a godly example, but it first starts with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, how do we become godly? We must first submit to the will of God for our lives. Hallelujah. We must say yes to him even in the hardest of times. Hallelujah. I want to ask y'all this morning, can you say yes when nobody is watching? 
Hallelujah. When you're at home alone, are you still being godly? Hallelujah. When the lights are out and the doors are closed, when you're not around everybody, is your life still an example? Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. And that's what brings me to this particular text today. As we look at 1 Kings chapter 17, we find another example of a butterfly effect. Israel, it's made its fast descent into idol worship. We know the story. The recent kings have institu instituted idolatry and God was no longer their God. Hallelujah. So the king, Ahab, he started his reign and he married that old Jezebel who was responsible for the advancement of Baal worship. Hallelujah. And then out of nowhere, literally a prophet named Elijah, the Tishbite, his name meant Yahweh is God. He shows up unannounced. Hallelujah. Nobody knew him. He wasn't summoned or invited, but with his name and his holy boldness, he went straight into Ahab's house. Hallelujah. And Elijah, he spent all of his time with God. And when you're in constant connection and fellowship with God, you ain't got no reason to be afraid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Elijah, he went and he proclaimed as the God of Israel lives, who I serve, it will not rain for the next few years, except by my word. Hallelujah. And I could just imagine King Ahab and Jezebel, they upset. Who does this? Nobody think he is. He's walking up in my house. He's telling me it's not going to rain. But how many of us know the worst thing a person can do is doubt you or sleep on you or deny your ability just because you don't look like them? Hallelujah. I saw a social media posting a while back that said, when they sleep on you, tuck them in. Hallelujah. Because by the time they wake up, they won't even recognize you. Hallelujah. Come on, women. How many of us have been cast aside because we did not look the part? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now Elijah He's gone to hide it. Hallelujah. He gave that word. Now he had it. Hallelujah. And God sends him to a brook to drink and the ravens feed him. And when the brook dried up after six months, God says, go down to Zarephath. I've directed a widow there to give you food. And he gets to Zarephath and he asks a woman for a drink of water. And as she goes to get it, he then asks her for some bread. And as a woman, I can just imagine her trying not to go off. But she told him she only had a little oil and a little flour. And she was going to make a cake for her, her and her son so they, they may eat it and die. Hallelujah. She couldn't even help herself. How was she going to help Elijah? Hallelujah. But Elijah told her, don't be afraid. Go do what I said. Bring me my peace first. And then make you and your sons. The flour won't be used up and the jar of oil won't run dry. And this brings me to my first point that your yes will generate abundance. Hallelujah. You'll never lack when you got a yes, when you say yes. Hallelujah. Yes, it may be a simple three-letter word, but it's actually pretty hard. Hallelujah. Yes, it's unpopular. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, it's lonely. Yes, it's going to cost you a lot. Hallelujah. Elijah's yes. It took him on a journey that kept him on the run. Hallelujah. But in that journey, he had more than what he needed hallelujah he had abundance hallelujah the widows yes even at a time when she didn't think she had it it allowed her to feed her her son and Elijah for three years hallelujah her oil never ran out even during a drought hallelujah and I saw and that even if she had acted within her emotions, she may not have survived the three years. Hallelujah. I was talking to my mom and sister some time ago, and we were having, you know, our normal girl talking. My mama said that emotions are a liability. 
Hallelujah. And we know what a liability is. It's a person or a thing whose presence or behavior is likely to cause embarrassment or put one at a disadvantage. Hallelujah. Listen, sometimes my emotions will cuss everybody out. It'll cuss my coworkers out. It'll cuss my family out. Hallelujah. If you catch me on the right day, anybody can get it. Hallelujah. I know I'm not by myself. Don't be looking at me funny. Hallelujah. When you act within your emotions, you be going off too. Women, we are driven by our emotions. It's the truth. Hallelujah. And sometimes a trigger will cause all practical, logical thinking to be thrown out the window. Don't be mad at me, okay? I'm just telling the truth. Hallelujah. We we sometimes overthink. We overreact. We we don't under, always understand, but we overstand. Hallelujah. We can create 10 different scenarios just within our mind. Hallelujah. Our emotions will drive us to even a darker place. I got a man standing up. He in agreement. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This woman, she was experiencing a drought and she was planning to die, but she forgot she had supplies in her house. Her emotions had her thinking that it was about to end, but she forgot she had already survived six months. Hallelujah. When going through hard times, hallelujah, your emotions will have you thinking that things are actually worse, but they're really not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They'll take you to a place that you thought you were healed from. Hallelujah. And if you're not careful, your emotions will have you participating in self-sabotage. Hallelujah. And I'm not saying don't have emotions. We're all human. But we cannot be ruled by our emotions. Hallelujah. We need to have emotional maturity. And we see it in this woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She was obedient in spite of what she was feeling. And let me tell you, as long as you're obedient, you'll always have the oil. Her oil never ran out because she said yes. She was a godly woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gifts and callings, they come without repentance. Hallelujah. Meaning God won't change his mind about you. But it's the anointing that destroys every yoke. It's the anointing that shifts the atmosphere. Hallelujah. The widow didn't know Elijah. She didn't know he was the reason for the drought. She was a Gentile. He was a Jew. But Jesus said, "When whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. That's the Bible. I didn't make that up. Hallelujah. And if you give to him, he'll give it back to you. Press down, shaking together, and running over. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, my yes, it generates abundance. Hallelujah. I'll never go without even in my dark days because I'll always have more than enough hallelujah hallelujah let's keep going in verse 15 it says she went and did according to the word of elijah and she and her her, her household ate for many days it wasn't by coincidence that god led elijah to this widow's house she lived in a place that worshiped baal but she believed in God and God knew he could trust her. Hallelujah. She was exemplifying the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. At the same time, God saw her need and not only sent Elijah there so she could sustain him, but he sent Elijah there so she, he could sustain her. Hallelujah. This brings me to my second point that your yes will generate answered prayers. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. I was reading one of the seven habits to a godly life is having a consistent prayer life. Hallelujah. Jesus said men should always pray and not faint. Hallelujah. And so back then it was customary.
customary for house guests to pay for their room and board. And because God knew the widow was in a dire situation, God sent Elijah to help relieve some of the burden. Hallelujah. And I got happy reading this because I began to think about how many times some of us have given our all to something or someone and we felt depleted. Hallelujah. We had our own prayer request laid before God. Hallelujah. And out of nowhere, God sent somebody to meet the very need. Hallelujah. Psalm 34 and 4 says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what your answer prayer could be. It could be as simple as somebody filling up your gas tank. It could be so as simple as somebody wanting to buy you lunch, hallelujah, or somebody offering to watch your kids for a few hours, or pick up groceries, or send a text to encourage you. Bottom line is God knows what you need just when you need it, and he'll always show up. Hallelujah. He's a prayer answering God. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, the very thing that you've been praying for is tied to your yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do I know? Hallelujah. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 16, commit to the Lord and he will establish your plans. Hallelujah. Jesus said, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you. You can ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Your yes, your obedience, it will move you from this season until your next season. Hallelujah. Come on, talk back to me. God told Moses and the Israelites, if you obey my command, everywhere you set your foot will be yours. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor your prayers are being answered right now hallelujah whatever you need as long as you say yes you gotta do your part and god's gonna do the rest hallelujah hallelujah i'm almost done i'm not a long preacher hallelujah the widow's son he became sick and then he died hallelujah and naturally she was distraught she didn't understand hallelujah and she took him to elijah who prayed for him. And the Bible says the child was revived. And when Elijah brought the, the boy back to his mother, he said, see, your son is alive. And she said, now I know. Now I know. You are a man of God. And that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. This brings me to my last point. That your yes will generate miracles. Hallelujah. The woman, she had food throughout the entire drought. But it wasn't until Elijah prayed for her son and her son became alive that she believed he was a prophet of God. Good God Almighty. She had survived all that time and still had a little bit of doubt, but she needed some extra reassurance. And some of us are in desperate need of a miracle. Hallelujah. I need some real saints in here who's going to talk to me. Hallelujah. Our faith is decreasing. We're dying on the inside. Even though we're existing, we're not really living. Hallelujah. And some of us need a miracle to jumpstart our faith. Hallelujah. And do you know how you get it? Ask me how you get it. Thank you for asking. You get it by saying yes. Hallelujah. We're one yes away from the very thing that will renew our faith. Hallelujah. Saying yes requires you to completely trust God, not knowing the outcome. The Bible says, though he slay me, yet 
will I trust him? Hallelujah. And God knows us. He knows his children. He knows that we need a reminder of how powerful he is. The widow was the only believer in a town engulfed in idolatry. Zarephath, it was the heart of Baal worship. And she needed additional assurance from God. I'm here by myself, God. Hallelujah. But she needed to know that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him hallelujah so i dare you to say yes to release the miracle that you need hallelujah say yes so that you can experience a miracle that you're not expecting it may not happen tomorrow hallelujah it may not happen today but your yes it solidifies that it's coming god said in revelation i know your works and behold i have set before you an open door that no man can shut Say yes, so you can experience the wonder working power of God. Say yes, so you can experience a revival. Say yes, so you can experience a refreshing. If you need healing, say yes. If you need debt paid off, say yes, God is away out of no way say yes I'm reminded of the ultimate yes that he yielded life changing results look at your neighbor and say neighbor I'm here because of a yes Jesus said not my will but the will be done I'm alive because of his yes God I thank you for your yes I know it feels like this is the end but look at your neighbor and say neighbor there is glory after this there is victory on the other side of this Tell somebody I am about to experience my own butterfly effect. My yes, it will bring abundance. My yes, it will answer my prayers. My yes will bring me my miracle. Godly women setting an example. Godly women praising God in the middle of a storm. But the Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise. It shall be in my mouth. Godly women setting that example in our faith. For we know that all things work together for the good of them and to the called according to his purpose. Godly women setting an example and believing God for protection. For the Bible says, in the time of trouble, he shall hide me, he shall hide me, he shall protect me. Lift up your hands and say, God, you can trust me. God, I follow your example. God, I say yes. God, I say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When the Spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree and my answer, my answer, my answer, it will be, yes, yes, I'll go, yes, I'll serve, 
Yes, I'll do it. Yes, I'll pray. Yes, I'll preach. Yes, I'll witness. I will. I'll go. Say yes. Come on, open up your mouth. Lift up your hands. And say yes. Tell your neighbor, it starts with me. It starts with you. It starts with me. It starts with you. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And the Bible says that no good thing will he withhold from those who walk upright. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, can God count on you? Can God trust you to say yes? Will you say yes in famine? Will you say yes when your oil is a little low? Will you say yes when you feel like you can't go, can't go on? The song says, I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me, leave me now. God, he's changing, changing your story. Small steps, big results. Small steps, big results. You go from lack to abundance. You go from sick to being healed. You go from broken to being put back together. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. God is, he's changing your story he's changing the outcome he's turning 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 it around say yes say yes be not this boy Whatever betide, God will. Look at your neighbor, point to somebody across the room and say, God will take care of you. We need his wings of love about. God will. He'll take care of you. God will make it all work out. I've got a feeling. That everything, 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 it will be, be all right. Say it. Say us. Say us. Say us. It's back right now. It's God right now, but the storm whew, is passing over. The storm is passing over. I dare you to prophesy to yourself and lift your hands and wave it and say the storm, the famine, the lack of the frustration, the stress, the depression, the worry, the sickness, it's passing, passing on. Say it! Say it! It's passing over. It's passing over. It's passing over. I see you in the future, thank you, Lord. And you look better. You look better. Come on, I dare you just lift your hands. Come on and receive. Receive your next. Receive your abundance. Receive your prayers. Receive your miracles. 
Receive your abundance, sir. Receive your answered prayers. Receive your miracles. But it starts when you say yes. Come on, you know what happens when you lift up your hands. You surrender your will. Woo. You surrender your way. God, I give it to you. I give it to you. You can have me. You can use me. Take me as I am. I'm yours. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I say, everything I do, everything I go, I'm yours, Lord. Say yes. We got a mighty. Say yes. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift up your hands. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, I can't talk to him for you. Only you can talk to him for yourself. Come on, tell God yes. It starts with me. It starts with us. Everything I need is connected to my yes. Everything I desire, Bible says, delight thyself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. I see y'all crying. Come on, lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Breakthrough is in the room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel yokes being destroyed right now. Hallelujah. Everything that's been keeping you down is being lifted up off of you. Hallelujah. I dare you just shake a little bit. Hallelujah. Shake yourself into freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. Woo. Even when it's difficult, you can still say yes. Come on, grab your hand, neighbor's hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We praise you. For you are God and God alone. Thank you, Lord. We ask that even when it's hard, you will give us the will and the unction and the tenacity to say yes. Even when we feel like we can't go on, give us the will to say yes. We want to please you. We want to be a godly woman. We want to set the right example. Even when nobody is looking, we still want to walk worthy of the calling that you have placed upon us. God, I pray for my neighbor's hand right now that whatever they may be going through, whatever they may be facing, by the time they get home, you have already fixed it. You have already started changing their story. Hallelujah. You have already started turning it around. God, I don't know what everybody in here needs, but you know Hallelujah. You're an omnipresent God. You're an all-knowing God. You're an all-sufficient God. And God, we give it all to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We praise you right now for what you're about to do in our lives. Hallelujah. We don't see it right now, but the Bible says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think. God, we know that you're able. And we know that you will pull us through. Hallelujah. Even in famine. Even in the storm. Even in the rain. Even in darkness. Our light will still shine bright. And we'll forever give your name all the glory and the honor and the praise. It's in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Come on, clap your hands for your victory. Come on. And you may not see it right now, but believe it. Hallelujah. We walk by faith and not by sight. 
Hallelujah. Come on, y'all don't sound victorious. Clap your hands. Open up your mouth. Holiday it is. That's the sound I was looking for. And shout for your victory. Come on, tell your neighbor you are victorious. We got victory. You are victorious. We got victory. us on today by way of Facebook. We pray something was said to encourage you, motivate you, challenge you, especially to the women that have viewed this live broadcast. Pray that you have received something that will change your life. Let's give God another hand clap of praise for our preacher. Pray that you will have a transforming week, one of the best weeks of your life on this week. And we pray and thank you for those who dub us as your Facebook church and be your Facebook pastor to all these women who have put their best foot forward and giving God praise. We honor God for you. And remember on this week, don't let the day make the difference in you, but you make the difference in the day. If you want to become a member of this family of faith, Contact our church at 219-949-2225. You can send us a Facebook message. You can email us. You'll see all those contacts on the screen after we close this broadcast. Sister Mitchell, we want you to know that we are praying for you. Brother and Sister Broden, we want you to know that we are praying for you. Sister Myrtle McGee, Sister Annie Terry, Sister Rakia, all those that are sick, we pray that God's blessings will fall on your life. Until we meet again, may God bless you and God keep you. Let's put our hands together. Good afternoon, New Revelation, and happy Women's Day. Now it's time for the NRNBC News for the week. The Professional Healthcare Ministry is sponsoring a back to school slash health fair on Saturday, August 20th from 11 a.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. Please bring the entire family and invite someone else to attend this special event. If you are interested in volunteering, please see Sister Antoinette Cardenas. There's a special sign-up sheet in the vestibule. If you are interested in attending the lamest trip to the White Sox Stadium in Chicago on Friday, August 26th at 7, 10 p.m., the cost is $80 per person, and this will include the interest fee as well as the food. The bus will leave the church at 4 o'clock p.m. The deadline to pay is August 7th. This year, the Deacon Willie Guthrie Retreat will be held on September 10th, 2022 at Cedar Lake Ministries. This retreat will be a one-day event beginning at 8 o'clock a.m. and ending at 4 o'clock p.m. The cost is $20 for ages 8 through 15 and $40 for ages 16 and older. All money must be paid by August 15th to Lonnie McDade or Deacon Kenneth Williams. More information will be coming in the near future. Revelation, the Lamez Ministry is having their annual All Men Cooking Brunch on Sunday, August 14th, 2022, immediately after service. We have named this brunch the James Carruthers Brunch and would like everyone to come and bring a big appetite. Why? Because the menu will consist of ribs, fried turkey, fish, string beans, macaroni, sweet potatoes, baked and fried chicken, corn casserole, potato salad, black eyed peas, collard greens, dressing, desserts, and last but not least, cornbread. The cost for the dinner is $12, consisting of two meats, three sides, dessert, 
and cornbread. If a person doesn't want to purchase the entire dinner, they could purchase items individually or a la carte for only $3 per item. The layman's Ministry is asking all men who aren't cooking to donate $20. And please give that donation to Brother English. Through Revelation, let us continue to offer our prayers as well as our support to our sick and shut in, as well as their caregivers, and also to the bereaved. We have recently been informed this week that one of our former members, Sister Willa White, mother passed away. Her name was Doris Whitlow. Let's keep that entire family in our prayers. This concludes the NRNBC News for this week. If you are watching and would like to visit or contact New Revelation, we are located at 3140 West 21st Avenue here in Gary, Indiana. Our phone number is 219-949-2225. We are currently on break from Bible study, but our pastor would like the entire church to read the book of Revelation, which will be taught upon our return. If you would like to attend our Sunday school service, we, it starts at 9.30 a.m. and our morning worship service starts at 10.50 a.m. We would love to have you come and join us. May you all have a most wonderful week. And as we say here in New Revelation, don't let the day make the difference in you, but you make the difference in the day. We'll see you next time. Take care. Hi, I'm Pastor Turner, the Revelation Missionary Baptist Church, and we're here at our annual church picnic. As you can see, we had a great time today, and we just wanted to greet you to let you know that we've been blessed. We started off a little rainy. As you can see, the sun is shining, and we wanted to let you know that we have some upcoming events. Uh, next week on Saturday, uh, July 30th, our youth will be having a car wash that starts at 11 a.m at New Revelation 3140 West 21st Avenue in Gary, Indiana. We would like to see you there. If you want your car to go away shining, come and support our youth. God bless you, and we'll keep you in our prayers, and you keep us in yours. Hi, my name is Kayla, and I'm here to talk to you about the New Revelation Car Rush this Saturday. At the Car Rush, is going to be at New Revelation through 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And if you would like to make any donations, you can come see Sister Charlotte or Sister Bree. And if you have any unwanted towels, you can take them over here. See you there!